Hi guys! So as you can tell by my big puffy sleeves and these big blue eyes, we're gonna do a makeup transformation inspired by another Disney princess named Merida from the movie Brave. I decided to take her and do a little weird twist on it. I absolutely loved the witch in this movie and I feel like she's one of the most underrated characters so I wanted to do half Merida, half the witch. Since she goes to this witch in the forest and gets a spell to transform her family into bears, specifically to change her mother's mind about marriage. But it all goes wrong and what if the spell went even worse and she was transforming into the witch? First we're gonna do the beauty makeup of Merida and then we're gonna transform into partially the witch. So let's get started with the makeup tutorial and see how this goes. It's gonna be weird and creepy, like always. So first of all, I'm gonna get my hair out of the way and put it in a hair net because we're gonna put on a wig later. Stick some bobby pins in it just to make sure it won't fly off your head. Then I'm just spraying my entire face with some makeup setting spray and then getting Urban Decay's eyeshadow primer potion and just putting that around my eyes and my nose anywhere where it might crease from the makeup and the crevices on your face. Now I'm gonna lay some tissue around my costume so the makeup won't get on there like a beautiful bagged present. Then getting my new favorite drugstore foundation. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation with a flat top kabuki brush and just buffing that into my skin. I absolutely love this because they have different foundations for different types of finishes you want. If you want dewy, if you're more oily, and it looks super natural, light to medium coverage. I think it's perfect for any Disney princess, depending on what type of coverage you want. This is a new favorite, the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. It's a drugstore brand and a perfect dupe for the NARS Creamy Concealer. This is going to highlight under our eyes, make us look more alive and awake. Cause I think Disney princesses look a lot more awake and preppier than I do. Then blending all that in with the Beauty Blender. If you do not have the Beauty Blender sponge cause it is so overpriced, you can use a dupe like the one by Real Techniques or just a damp disposable sponge. Getting the lightest concealer color. This is kind of excessive and not necessarily needed, especially if you're doing this on a child or someone younger, but I'm just doing some highlight colors. Then I'm going in with a contour color, especially around my nose. That is a taupe shade, especially because Merida has a smaller nose than I do. On the sides of my jowls and chin, because I have a very more angular face than Merida does, and she has more of a softer, rounder face with less of a jawline than I do. I don't mean to offend Merida, but she has more of a cabbage patch kid face and I have more of a weird circle heart pointy chin shaped face. So we're trying to duplicate the childish like wonder that Merida has. Now I get to use one of my favorite products ever which is a cheek stain. This specific cheek stain is Crimson by Besame. It's a makeup brand that's more of a vintage style and it's now carried in Sephora, some of the lip colors and everything, but this cheek stain is so wonderful, the packaging, and the cherry red pigment you get from this is like none other, and you can make it as dark or as light as you want. It just gives this glowing effect, and I think it's perfect for Merida because it's like your skin's glowing a little bit from within. Now I'm just gonna set my makeup, first getting the Bare Minerals, Mineral Veil and Hydrating, or Besame has a great product like this. It's more of a yellow tone powder, it's not really necessary, but I absolutely love it for under eyes, and I'm setting that, and then I'm getting an all over setting powder. This is the Rimmel London Pressed Powder from the drugstore with a powder brush and just setting all the rest of my makeup. Now going in back with another contour color, this is a bronzing powder by Benefit, the Hula Bronzer. Going over the areas where we did that taupe contour earlier so that it blends more naturally into the skin. Doing that contour around the socket of your eye too because Merida has a very tall, I know that's weird to say, a larger and taller eye socket to look more animated than most humans. Now it's time for the brows. You wanna get a cream color. I'm using Makeup Forever Flash Palette. Two parts yellow, one part red and one part brown to make the color of the ginger eyebrows that Merida has. And you're gonna get a very thin brush and start painting hair-like strokes over your natural brows. You want your brows to look like you maybe just dusted it with some tang, if you know what tang is. It's that powdery sugar stuff that you mix with water to make a delicious drink back when I was a child. And then we are gonna get a matte orange eyeshadow color. This is from my Morphe N35 palette with a powder brush and set those eyebrows. 
going back in that Morphe N35 Neutrals palette and getting two of the orange toned eyeshadows, a lighter one and a darker one. The darker one that we used for our eyebrows. I'm using the lighter one first all over the lid, blending it into the socket and also blending that on the bottom lash line as well. And then getting a darker one with the pencil brush concentrated on our lash line. Getting a eyelash curler and curling them lashes and just putting some mascara on because Merida doesn't have huge fancy false eyelashes. She has big eyes but you can barely see her lashes. Now for her lip color, I found the perfect color for Merida and it is the OCC Lip Pencil in Trick. It's matte, it's mauve with hints of nude in it. It's just perfect for her look. It makes her eyes stand out much more. Then I'm getting an alcohol palette. If you do not have this, you use cream colors because alcohol paints, as I always say, is for people who are more skilled makeup artists because it can harm your face if you put it too close to your eye and it stings a little. With a nail art sized brush, a very thin brush, because we are doing freckle marks as you can see here. And I say two different tones of browns because you want them to look natural. You could tap them with your finger. After you dot it, I'm really concentrating hard on this because I absolutely adore freckles and I wish I had some on my face. And once you're done with those freckles, it is time to get a ginger curly huge wig that resembles Merida. I got this one online and this costume comes from wholesalehalloweencostumes.com. You can check it out there. And that is the beauty portion of Merida. I hope you enjoy it. The contacts are from pinkyparadise.com. I think Merida has such a sweet, adorable face and I absolutely love her huge natural hair and it teaches girls to love themselves. I love that she's a tomboy and just does what she wants. But now it's time to transform ourselves into part witch. I'm getting a makeup remover wipe and removing half of the face that is our dominant makeup applying hand and taking out that blue contact. We are getting a cream based white color. This is the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk. One of the best tools you can get for special effects makeup are these Jumbo NYX pencils because they are super affordable. I'm using this all over my eye because we are gonna do a more animated witch and it's gonna give so much more expression. Trust me, it will look cool. It will make it look like your pupil is very small with a huge eye. If you do the proportions right, this is gonna be super tough to do, especially on yourself. Then I'm just setting that with a white eyeshadow. This is from my Crown Brush Blizzard palette. It has a little bit of sparkle, and I just think it gives that shiny eyeball effect. Like, you know how real eyeballs just have a shine to it? Because they're liquidy and like gushy. I know it's kind of creepy to think about, but I just want things to look cool. Now getting a highlight color that's a little bit lighter than our natural skin tone to do some bags under our eyes. We're gonna do an old age type makeup. This is gonna be very theatrical since this witch is very animated. Getting a white eyeliner pencil and outlining the witch's mouth on the side of your natural mouth. You know that hole where we like to put pizza and other delicious things in. Getting that white cream paint and just doing the cheeks on your top upper lip where her upper lip is going to be. You get another clean brush to blend out that color and you want to extend your nostril to make your nostrils and your nose bigger because the witch has a gigantic nose. She reminds me of Ubaba from Spirited Away if you know who that witch is. She's one of my favorites too. Doing some highlights on the crow's feet. Then getting a dark contour color that is almost chocolate brown but more of a taupe and doing the creases under the highlight marks. These are gonna be all of the wrinkles and frown lines that the witch has. Doing some frown lines in between her eyes where the top of her bridge of our nose is. Doing some old people spots around that nose. You want to try to make your nose look bigger than it actually is, which is super duper hard to do with cream makeup just on your face without doing prosthetics. But I'm trying using the colors and creams to extend the bottom of my nose with different highlights. Using the highlight color to paint in stubs of teeth. Get an off-white yellow color and then get some gum color, which is red and brown mixed together. If you get these flat top little paint brushes, they're gonna be great for face painting like this. Getting some chocolate brown paints and doing in the shadow marks inside the mouth where you know her tongue and everything would be around those red gums. We're going in with more contour colors just to make sure we have everything shaded in, especially around that frown of the smirk of this creepy witch. 
Reference pictures are key for this. You want to keep looking in the mirror. This also kind of reminds me of the witch from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Getting some black paint and outlining the grin, the corner of it specifically. And then getting some black paint and drawing in the eyebrow hair. She has a very thin eyebrow that is very angular to give her more expression around her big eye. You could go back with some gray colors or white colors for these eyebrows. Doing more wrinkle marks on my chin. Older people have sagging parts on their face. I can't wait till I get old to see where all the parts of my face are gonna sag. Just getting some dark brown, almost black cream colors and defining around the eyes more and some of the frowns and wrinkles. Pressing on some red pigment on the cheek of the witch just to give her more life, not make her look too old or too dead. And once you think that side of your face looks old and witchy enough, we are going to get to that Merida wig again, but this time I painted the other half of the witch side white. I actually used some dry shampoo with this and some silver paint. But then I'm getting some more contour colors and I forgot to do some wrinkles around my neck because she cannot have a young looking neck and an old looking face. And you could stop there, but I took it even further and I wanted to do the little blue wisp from the movie. There are these little blue characters in the movie that help show Merida the way to the witch's cottage. And they look like these really cute little human toddler like blue flames that are hopping around in the movie. Another aspect of this movie that reminds me of Spirited Away. I'm using the Makeup Forever flash palette with this, doing a dark blue at first. You get whatever cream paints or even body paints to do the flame-like shape of this little wisp, and then getting a lighter turquoise color and blending that in the center of the little human figure. More darker blue around the turquoise just to make it stand out more. You want to make sure you maintain that little human-like figure that reminds me of troll dolls back in the 90s. And then get a white cream paint and do two little dots for the eyes. This is totally optional, but I thought it would be a nice touch. And it kind of looks like a little piece of jewelry on Merida. And once you're done with that, that is our finished makeup look of the creepy side of Merida. She was transforming into part witch if the witch's spell was cast upon her and had a different side effect and she ended up looking and becoming the witch. I just thought it was a great contrast not only with one human that has more realistic characteristics but one that is more of a cartoonish style. One side that is younger and one side that is extremely older. Comment down below if you could have any wish ever granted like in the movie Brave what would it be and why? Now it's time to take this off. Thank you guys again so much for watching this and always supporting these. These Disney princesses take so, so, so much time, but it's always worth it in the end. And I'm so glad you guys are liking them. This roughly took me two and a half hours to create. All the products I use in this video will be listed down below in the description box so you can check it out and do it yourself. Especially this costume. I want to wear this to an event. It is so comfortable and cute with the huge sleeves. I actually liked the ginger hair. I think it's beautiful. I wouldn't mind wearing it for a day or so. If you guys attempted this makeup look or any of the other ones from my videos, please take a picture of them, tag me on Instagram, or send me a picture. I would love to feature your guys' work because I know that you guys have been working on a lot of makeups yourselves and you guys are super talented. I hope you guys enjoy watching this as much as I enjoy making them. More makeup transformations to come up ahead, some more Disney princesses, but some more other great surprises in between those as well. And I will definitely see you guys soon in the next video. Love you all. Bye.